Hello, welcome to the Mark Janard Show, the cybersecurity show. So we know ESP32 is a thing, and AI is potentially an even bigger thing with the way times are, AI, AI, AI. But what happens when we combine ESP32 with AI and make projects out of them? You came to the right video. I have three phenomenal ESP32 AI projects for you. So without further ado, let's get right into it. We're going dark. So the first project I have for you is the ESP32 Edge AI camera. So basically an ESP32 Edge AI camera project typically involves using an ESP32 S3 or an ESP32 cam microcontroller with an attached camera, right? That module is to perform AI tasks like uh, in the realm of image classification or object detection directly on the device, like the edge of the AI, right? Now, basically here's the uh, breakdown of the project workflow and the main components, right? And implementation. So in, in regards to the hardware assembly, you have the ESP32 S3 or the ESP32 uh, CAM board, the core microcontroller with an F, you know, a Wi-Fi camera support and AI acceleration features. The camera module, usually an OV2640 or a similar sensor or a similar sensor. You have the 3D printed case. It's optional, but come on, we trying to go the distance, right? No optional here. This is for portability and mounting, right? You have the antenna and connectors for better Wi-Fi connectivity and secure assembly. You have data collection. The ESP32 camera is basically often connected to a PC via a USB. A custom Arduino sketch runs on the ESP32 to capture images when commanded. A Python web interface using Flask, right, on the PC communicates with the ESP32 to capture images on demand. Preview and label images, upload images directly to Edge Impulse for data set creation and labeling. You have model training, right, that's the Edge Impulse. The image upload, that's the collected images that are uploaded to Edge Impulse, which is basically a web-based platform for tiny ML projects. The labeling, that's the images, they're basically labeled, right? Either during the upload or within the Edge Impulse. The model, de model design, you know, you can configure a neural network, typically a lightweight CNN for your task right? The object detection, the classification, etc. The training, the, the training, as, as far as that goes, the model is trained using the labeled data set. When it comes to the model deployment export, the trained model is exported from Edge Impulse as an Arduino library. Integration, the library is imported into the Arduino IDE. The sample code is, you know, the sample code is provided to run inference uh, on the ESP32. In regards to upload, the code with the model is uploaded to the ESP32 board. Now, edge in, you know, the edge inference, right? Uh, the ESP32 now runs the train, you know, model locally. The real-time inference is performed on captured images with results, right? That's the, that's the detected object and confidence output via serial or displayed on a web, you know, inference. Now here are some optional features, right? You have the web server interface. Some projects include an onboard web, uh, you know, server for configuration, whether it's, you know, the live preview and API access. You have a uh, voice inter you know, interaction. That's the ESP32 S3 AI cam boards can also process audio for voice commands. And then there's a cloud integration aspect of this. For advanced use, the ESP32 can connect to cloud AI services for additional processing. The next one we have is the ESP32 gesture recognition and classification. That's the second ESP32 AI project, ESP32 gesture recognition and classification. So the data acquisition, that's the vision based systems. You can use the ESP32 cam or ESP32 S3 I modules equipped with a camera to capture images or video streams of hand gestures, right? You have to get sensor based systems, right? Like employ, uh, you know, inertial measurement units like the IMUs, like the MPU 6050, the accelerator plus the, you know, the gyroscope, you know, or flex slash contact sensors embedded in a glove to capture the motion and orientation data. You know, you have the pre-processing, that's the vision-based image frames that are resized, normalized, and sometimes converted to, you know, the grayscale before being fed into the model. Now, it is sensor-based, right? 
the raw sensor data is filtered that's the noise reduction and sensor fusion techniques may be applied to combine accelerometer and the gyroscope data for a more accurate gesture you know representation you have the feature extraction that's the vision based where features can be extracted directly by a you know convolutional neural network that's the cnn or by using libraries like the open cv and media pipe to detect hand landmarks or contours it's sensor based so features such as acceleration you know angular velocity frequency spectrum that's the via ftt and energy via you know the psd are computed uh, from the sensor signals to represent different gestures. The model training is as goes. You have the data pre um, preparation. You have to collect and label gesture data. That's the images and sensor readings for all target classes, whether it's the palm, the fist, the thumb, etc. Then you have to, you know, select the model. Typically lightweight neural networks like the CNNs for images, the small dense networks for sensor data are chosen to fit the ESP32's resource constraints. So the training that's where models are trained on external hardware, whether it's the PC, often using, you know, PyTorch, then exported for deployment. Then you have the model deployment, uh, deployment conversion, right? Model deployment conversion, that's where you train models that are converted to a suitable format, whether it's the ONNX, the ESPDL for inference on the ESP32. You have the integration. The model is loaded into the ESP32 firmware, which is typically built using the ESP IDF or Arduino IDE. You have the inference gesture recognition, the input, that's the real-time data for image or sensor readings that is being captured or pre-processed. The model execution, that's where the input is passed through the neural network and output scores the probabilities for each gesture class that are computed. The classification where the class with the highest score is selected as the recognized gesture. The latency for inference on the ESP32 S3 is typically around 0.7 seconds for image based models. Now, that brings us to the post pre, you know, post processing and output. That's where, you know, you have the action mapping, uh, you know, where you have the recognized gestures that are basically mapped to specific commands or actions. You know, like the controlling LEDs, sending Bluetooth commands, or triggering automation tasks. You know, you have the feedback like the visual LEDs, audio, text to speech, or digital logs, or the GUE. Oh, GUE. <laughs> uh, GUE. No, the GUI, not the GUE. GUI logs or GUI feedback is provided to the user ESP32. Okay. Now, that is that project. Now, the last project we have is the ESP32 Voice Assistant and ChatGPT integration, okay? That's the ESP32 Voice Assistant and Chat, you know, GPT integration. That's the third project. You know, you the hardware components, you have the ESP32 board, which acts as the main controller handling, you know, audio input slash output and Wi-Fi connectivity. You have the microphone module. That's the I2, you know, S recommended, right? Uh, you know, which captures the user voices commands, the speaker with the I2S amplifier, which outputs the synthesized speech responses. Now, this is optional, but not optional. Come on. You have the relay modules for controlling appliances like the home automation use case, the push button to trigger voice, rec you know, recording the Bluetooth speaker for wireless audio output, the software workflow. Okay. Now, now let's get into the Wi-Fi setup. So we have the ESP32 that connects to your Wi-Fi network for internet access. You have the voice input where the user presses a button or uses a wake word, right? The ESP32 records the audio data from the microphone. Now you have the speech to text, the STT. Now option A is where you have the ESP32 that streams audio to a server. That's the Nod.js or Python, etc. that uses open AI whisperer or another STT engine. Option B is where you can use a cloud STT API directly from the ESP32. That's very resource intensive and less common. Now there is a ChatGPT API request. The recognized text is sent via HTTPP, right? <laughs> HTTP post to the open AI ChatGPT API using your API key for authentication. You have AI response. That's the ChatGPT that returns a text response, which is processed by the ESP32 or server. Then you have the text to speech that the TTS, right? Option A, 
is a server converts text to speech using Google TTS, OpenAI, or another API of your choice. And you, it's basically, it streams audio back to the ESP32. Option B, the ESP32 uses a local TTS library, limited quality slash language support. You have the audio playback. The ESP32 outputs the audio response through the speaker, the device control, that's optional. If the response includes a command like the turn on the light, ESP32 triggers GPIO pins or relays. Now, an example, just a random example of the project structure, you know, of the ESP32 firmware, that's the C++ or the Arduino, you know, it basically manages the hardware, whether it's the mic, the speaker, the button, it handles Wi-Fi and the WebSocket slash HTTP uh, communication. It buffers and streams audio data. You know, you have the server, that's the nod.js slash the type script. It receives audio via the WebSocket. It runs STT, like the Whisperer, and the TTS. It integrates with ChatGPT via OpenAI API. It sends audio responses back to the ESP32. Now, this is optional, not optional. You have the lane chain integration for advanced common parsing and device control. Now, here are some challenges that come with this. You have the audio buffering, which is basically ensuring smooth uh, smooth low latency between, you know, of streaming, right? Of the ESP32 and the server. The WebSocket communication is another factor. Basically, the, it's, it's reliability of real time bi directional data transfer. There are some resource constraints, like the ESP32 has limited RAM slash CPU. Offloading heavy tasks to a server is common. The API key security, you can keep your open a, open AI API key secure and never hard code it in public firmware. There's no code slash pre-built solutions for some platforms, whether it's the M5 stack Atom S, you know, 3R, which offer downloadable firmware and companion apps, enabling ChatGPT powered voice assistance on ESP32 hardware with minimal setup. So that's what I have for you today. Please take a moment right now to hit that subscribe button and the like button. If you appreciate this video and you gain value from this video, please let me know that by hitting that subscribe button and the like button right now. I appreciate your viewership. Stay safe and see you in the next video.